Welcome to this month's version of the Hazmat IQ Chemical of the Month. I'm Chris. I'm Joe. And here we are in front of the camera at Metamedia in Maryland. Chris and I have been promising for months the Chemical of the Month. Today we're doing it. So here, we're, done. we're doing known chemicals, unknown chemicals, odors. Actual calls. The actual calls. This is like the confessions of our hazmat responders. So if you guys got confessions, you got a chemical of the month that you want us to do, email it to us at info at hazmatiq.com. Yeah, we want your ideas, your calls, and we'll do chemical of the months on it. All and, right. and even if you want to star in the video, give us a call. You can talk to Chris. Right. Okay, so this is the call Chris was on. He's from Miami-Dade Fire Department, got dispatched on a suspected acid bomb. Supposedly there were some gang fights going on. We get a call we get right across the University of Miami, up at the Metro Rail, kind of like an elevated uh, subway system. We got down in South Florida, and uh, we go in there unknown, other than there's been a handful maybe of explosions and there's other containers in different level of integrity. They've evacuated the metro rail, police, everyone's there, the media. We arrive, they tell us, go, it's there. Go in there. Go it's, take care of Go take care of that. It. Go find out what it is. Can we use the metro rail again? What do you do? I can't call Chemtrek. It's not in the Chris manual. It's not in my database. Camille's not helping me out. It's not in NIOSH. So what do we do? I ran a red one. So how'd you get to red one? Let me show you what red one means. Chris ran on that suspected acid bomb, didn't know what it was, but there was explosion. So he had to size it up. How do you size up a chemical when you don't know what it is? So what did Chris do? He went to the periodic chart, which, which we can size up using that, or he went to the alphabetical and it said, look, this is an acid bomb or a Mountain Dew bottle. Is Mountain Dew there? No. So where did it take you to? Above, Above the line. line. So when you were going on that metro rail, you were thinking to yourself, inside of that container, worst case scenario, it's a gas. Those vapors that are going to come off of that gas are heavier than air. What are the hazards of that gas? Flammable, polymerized, acid, fluorine, radioactive, and toxic, and also reacting. Air reacting, chemical reacting, water reacting. So we continue our size up on chart three. That's what you think. That's what you're thinking at the beginning. You go to chart three and you look for Mountain Dew. Is Mountain Dew there? Nope. Is Mountain Dew in the corrosive gas nope. blue box? Nope. So how are you going to respond to a Mountain Dew bottle? Red one. What's the hazard of what's inside of that Mountain Dew bottle? It is all hazards. WMD, water reactive. And what air meters reactive. do you bring for the Mountain Dew bottle? You bring them all. You bring the rad meter, the temperature gun, the CGI, the F and pH paper, and you determine what are the hazards. Well, let's go back to the scenario again and look at this. Does that look like it's leaking? No. Will I get CGI readings? Will I get PID readings? Will I get any kind of readings in the air there? No, it's a sealed container. So what are you concerned with on this, Chris? You heard explosions. What would cause this bottle to explode? Temperature increase from a chemical reaction, which I can't measure when they're my air monitoring instruments. So, so what did I do? When we got off the rig, we're turning out gear, self-contained breathing apparatus. Now we're going into a train, and we're going looking for evidence, and looking for evidence of chemicals and containers. Hey, and then we find a container. Chris, here's the container. Do you think this would be a good idea for me to take that Mountain Dew container and shake it and open it up. Good that's idea, bad idea? That's a bad idea. Of course not. That's a bad of idea. Of course not. Now I'm going to give you, now like Joe said, I'm going to tell you the way this, I rolled with this call. I shoot the container, Let's no go. temperature increase. O2, so I'm going to go Look, back. right there. No well, increased temperature. All of my meters were copacetic. The radiation was equal background. There was no fluorine. There was no pH change. There was no CGI. O2 was 21%. LEL is zero. No PID, no FID, no Freon meters, nothing. I'm in turn out gear, self-contained breathing apparatus. So here's a question. If you get no meter readings on all of your meters, does that mean it's safe? No. I can, I can attest to that because the story's not over. <laughs> okay, uh, so what happened? I feel, I feel like a, I feel compelled to open up the, met, the metro rail system again because they've evacuated the whole train system. They need to get somewhere. There were mothers, there were babies, there were infants, there were old people there. So what I decided to do and is move this acid bomb away from 
the metro rail down to an area of safe refuge where we can further analyze them. Here's what happened. If I'm carrying the instruments, I can't take any more meter readings, right? What I didn't realize while I was, as, and as I was walking, I was first destroying evidence, which was the wrong thing to do. Let me, let me walk with you. The aluminum that was, un, that was unexposed to the acid started to become exposed to the acid. It's a, the, the vapors and the pressure increased, and with, unbeknownst to me, guys, the thing blows up in my hand. It blew my pants off. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't my fingers, and, it, and, and, and I had my crew around me. So what was the lesson learned there? Just because there's no reaction and no temperature reading doesn't mean that it, it's safe, that any type of instrument or, or container cannot be moved, especially when it's a crime. And you've heard, you've heard explosions already. Why did the other ones explode? Right. What's going to tell you, oh, this one's not going to explode, the rest of them do. Right? I made a decision, and the decision was I had the best intentions, but it was a, an outcome, thank God, wasn't fatal or made me. My intentions were get the hazard out of the metro rail and open it up to the public. So if you had to do it over again, I would you move it? I would not move it. Would not move it. So what would you do? I would call the bomb squad. I would identify the location, give them the meter readings, and they would handle it. If they wanted my assistant, it'd be a very controlled way of opening it, or they have robots that could pick let, that up. Yeah, let those guys handle that. What about the mother and the children and the infant waiting for the metro rail? If they can move it and bring another one in. In other words, uh, I'll live to fight another day. That's not a line of sight rescue. No. So you don't risk your life to line right. of sight rescue. Exactly. So very common call. We've all been there. Kids blow up mailboxes with this all the time. Remember, a couple of things. While it's reacting, while that aluminum foil is reacting with that acid, it's hot. But it doesn't mean that because it's cool, the reaction's over. Oh, and I want to add to that, Joe. When I grabbed it with gloves, I could feel the heat from the glove. Ooh. It's very hot. So make sure you don't move it because, right. look, this was cool because there was aluminum foil and acid. As soon as it got jarred around a little bit, the chemical reaction started, started again. again. Yes. And that's what happened. Right. So... Lesson learned here, don't move chemical reaction containers. Hey, let me just share with you, this was an acid bomb. How would it change if this was a meth lab that was reacting, they were cooking? Do you let it, let it, let it cool down? So make sure you beware of the reactions because they kill. And you guys email us your stories. Remember Percy Johnson in Shreveport, Louisiana was killed in ammonia. We learned from him to this day. We had Ricky Pierce in Phoenix, Arizona get killed with a K-12 getting someone out of a toluene container. We learned from him. I'm, pro I'm telling you my stories. You can learn from my uh, bad decision. Uh, give us your stories. It'll be anonymous. We can share it with the country so that we can save someone's life or someone's health. So All right. for the next month. Signing uh, off. Yep, signing off. All right, you guys, be safe. We'll see you out there on the road somewhere and continue to practice the system. I'll see you. I'm Chris. I'm Joe. Peace. Out.